Hey, what's going on, mi gente? Six o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. My name is George Torres. I'm the owner of Sofrito Media Group, um, a social media agency based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm actually at my office space right now, uh, putting in a long day's work on a Sunday, but definitely worth it to get ahead in the week. So the first thing I want to do is I want to thank you for taking your time on a Sunday to come and join me. I hope that the topic that I'll be discussing today is interesting to you. I'm just going to take a walk around. Um, I hope that this topic actually serves you. And the reason why I thought about actually doing this is because in my sessions and my classes, this is something that comes up as a common topic. So I want to make sure that, you know, with that said, that we addressed it. And I had a bigger conversation on social because I think that is something that a lot of people deal with, not just in entrepreneurship, but just in life in general. Um, so I figured, uh, when would be the best time to do it? And I figured a Sunday afternoon, we're getting ready to start our weeks and, uh, this would be a great time for us to have this meaningful conversation about fear-based decision-making. Um, again, my name is George Torres. I am the actual founder of the Sofrito for your uh, co-founder of Capicu Cultural Showcase and the School of Poetic Arts and other, other properties as well. Um, I do a lot of social media workshops with entrepreneurs who are looking to become unstuck and looking to actually create something that they dream of doing. Um, hold on, I'm just trying to find a comfortable spot here where the glare is not too crazy. All right. So, anyway, fear-based decision-making. Um, it's pretty much when, when fears or worries are actually dictating your actions. So, for some of you... Some of you want to write books. Some of you are interested in uh, making movies. You know, um, some of you want to teach, want to go back to college, want to change careers. Um, you know, you have these dreams. You're working a job right now that, that you may be good at, making great money, but you're not happy with. Um, I, I dealt with that for a long time. So for those of you who do not know me, um, I actually spent a long time. My, my first career was in the culinary field. I left that to go to college full time at the age of 25, divorced with two children. Um, really tough time getting through school. Um, but while I was in college, um, I created my website. And even though I created my website and I had really good intentions and I thought maybe I could take over the world at the time or whatever, I did a lot to self sabotage myself. There's a lot of things that I did um, where I could have done something differently or I could, I could have been fearless and did something better than what I did. Um, it wasn't up until about two years ago. Um, my children had, uh, my children were at the point now, uh, they were in their junior year of college. They were at the point where they were about to go into their senior year. They've already made it through the toughest parts of uh, being in school. Then I decided that I was going to make a change. Um, and that meant uh, walking away from a corporate job or corporate America in general and being in a situation where uh, I wouldn't um, report to a job from 9 to 5, or in my case, 9 to 9. Um, you know, even though I was making really good money, uh, I, I made a choice to, to walk away. Um, but before that, so much before that, I had the opportunity to do the same thing multiple times, and I didn't do it. I was paralyzed with fear. I was thinking about, you know, being married with, with kids, thinking about what would happen if I couldn't provide. Uh, I was thinking about health insurance. That was a big topic for a lot of people over the last couple of years. Um, paying the taxes on the house, paying the car note. Um, just thinking about all the different things that could go wrong if, uh, if you actually pursue your entrepreneurial dream and you don't really have a plan. So I overplanned. I spent 18 years planning. And 18 years, um, every time that I thought I was going to get ready to take the jump, I didn't take it. Um, why? A bunch of reasons. Um, just like some of you, and you can jump in at any time with, with your chat and, and, and tell me what you're afraid of. Uh, but for me, I was, uh, I wish that I would have had more money saved up so that I could actually start my business. Um, I wish that I would have had uh, better access to capital uh, through venture uh, or otherwise investing investment uh, people. That would believe in my dream. I wish I had the skill set to even pitch to a capital venture uh, person. Um, I wish that I would have had the partners in place. I wish I would have had people 
who believed in me. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. I wish a lot of different things. Um, I wished a lot of things that would be perfect before I would make the jump. And I made all these silly requirements as to what I would be able to have in place in order for me to make the jump. And what happened was, and what has happened, is that not in the same business I'm in, but other businesses that, ha that came from similar beginnings as I have, have been able to surpass um, our business and, and do great things in the community and do great things in the space. And meanwhile, I was still working a full-time job at T-Mobile and having and then working a full-time job at home with, with Sofrito Media Group. And I was quite successful at it, and I, I obviously it helped me get through the times that I needed to get through with my family and get to school and pay the bills and all of that, but... I always wondered, could I have made more money had I just took the jump? Had I planned a little bit better? Had we put ourselves in a position where we could take the risk and, and did it as a family? So um, that was me. You know, um, a lot of different things led to me being bold. And one thing was obviously uh, being in a situation where um, my family, uh, the children, were, were done with school. That was a big financial burden uh, for a while. Uh, it's a big cost uh, to send kids to school and take care of all the different bills that are associated with that. Um, big shout out to their mom who has hold, held it down immensely, um, working with me to get that to make that happen. Um, but I don't know. It's just uh, I don't know. This is a very vulnerable topic. Um, it was scary when I first did it, and, and I did all kinds of crazy things and irrationalized, and thank God it's been two years and I haven't had to go back. Um, I, haven't, I haven't had the need to go back. I haven't wanted to go back. Um, I'm very happy living the life the way I live it, but I created this life, and, 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 I, and I had to, to, at some point, draw the line in the sand and say, you know what? It's now or never. You know, I'm 45 years old at this point. My children are grown. You know, am I going to make my dreams come true? Am I going to be able to travel the world? Am I going to be able to experience all the things that I want to experience before I'm no longer here? And and for me, that was the line in the sand. You know, it's making sure that all my responsibilities were taken care of and I was able to jump into it. So I, I want to share four tips with you um, that will hopefully, and, and these are just like, this is just me, my advice on how you can get past your fear, regardless of what it is. Um, what did you, what do you say no to? <laughs> what do I say no to? Um, I, I don't say no to much anymore. What I did say no to for a long time was, uh, um, again, just 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 not understanding. How can I put it? Um, it was just fear. It was just like, I'll give you a perfect example. So when I was in college, I was the president of my fraternity, of my chapter of my fraternity. I had a vision for the fraternity that was immense, which thankfully, just recently, I just got signed to take on the national body of the fraternity. So a lot of those dreams that I had back in 1997, I'm going to be able to fulfill, hopefully, today with the rebranding of the frat. But when I was in the chapter, I had all these ideas for the chapter of how we were supposed to present ourselves from a professional perspective, how, what kind of programming we were going to do. I had the whole idea, everything laid out for the chapter. But what happened? The chapter didn't believe in it because it was all my ideas. I didn't go in and, and really partner with them to get the ideas that they had to incorporate it into what I had. But I knew I had the ideas, and I just wanted to make it happen my way. As a result of that, I end up uh, being, finding myself in a position where it's just me believing in it and just me working to get it done. And I was self-sabotage. Because I knew that if I did everything myself, that I would never get any help from the guys. Because at that point, they would be like, yo, he can handle it. He got this. So I actually sabotaged. And I just, like, dropped everything. And I didn't do things to its full capability. And the project failed. And, of course, I would turn around and blame everybody else for not helping me. But in reality, I was able to execute. Um, you know, but then again, there's the other question of, if, even if I executed, would it be something that the brothers really believed in? So it was a good thing kind of that I self-sabotaged, but nonetheless, you know, it was something that I, I knowingly let it fail because I was afraid of the responsibility of having to do it myself forever. And I don't know if that means anything. And I know there's a couple of my fraternity brothers on here, so 
I think that they could understand it um, because most of the brothers that I kind of hang out with or are cool with were kind of like me in their chapters, uh, that they really cared maybe too much about what was happening. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question, Jessenia, but that's what I meant to say. What advice do you have for people who know something big lies before them, but they don't know where to focus their energy, that maybe they don't know yet where their skills and passion are? That's a really good question, Jessica. Thank you so much. And thank you for your compliment on my hashtag. I love my hashtag, so <laughs> Social Sofrito is my favorite hashtag in the world. Um, and if you get a chance, go to Instagram and hashtag, do a search for hashtag Social Sofrito and you'll find some very cool, inspirational memes that I create every day. Um, you know what? I think that the four things that I'm going to share may answer that question. And if not, we'll circle back to it and we'll kind of explore it a little bit deeper. Um, so we'll do that, okay? Um, the first thing is getting started. When is the perfect time to get started? Now. Right now. Like, yesterday. Like, do whatever it is that you want to do. Or do it on a smaller scale. And I wish that some of you would actually give me examples of what you're trying to do so that I can give you some ideas of how I would go about it, knowing what I know today. Um, but, for example, if you are somebody who wants to write a book, start writing short stories. Start writing poetry. Go out. Read it. Do readings. Do do writing groups, you know, go to writing circles and, and, and share your experiences with other people. If you can't do it in person, if there's nothing in your community uh, along the lines of, of the kind of writing that you do, then do it virtually online. There's plenty of, of, of circles online that you could join. Um, make sure that you obviously uh, protect yourself as far as your uh, copyright and everything. Make sure that you, uh, you're you well-versed in what it takes to copyright your work and protect it. But um, definitely join circles that are reputable to share your work. And the reason why I say that is because, like I said, I wish that I had many things before I started my business and that everything was perfect. And I hear people all the time in my classes tell me, George, um, I'm just waiting for this to happen. And once this happens, I'm definitely going to make the plunge. And it never happens. It never happens because once you have that one thing, there's five other things that you think that you're going to need because we overanalyze. We get in our own head which is something Victor Cruz was talking about the other day in acting class, is we get in our own head and we talk ourselves out of it. So the time to start is now. Do it on the smallest scale possible. So if you want to open up a retail store, start with an Amazon experience or an eBay experience and start selling things that you have access to from a wholesale district and start selling them for a little bit of money just to kind of get used to what it takes to market and, and, and promote a product and sell and, and set up infrastructure and systems, etc., um, so that's the first thing I would say is just get started. You know, right now is the best time for you to get started. Um, the internet provides amazing opportunities to do things that we couldn't do years ago. I'm about to buy a camera, which I'm scared to buy, by the way, <laughs> ironically enough. I've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now. Um, my friend Shaggy Flores finally pushed me over the edge and, uh, and, and there's a camera that I want to buy and I was afraid to buy it cause it's so expensive and I've never really bought equipment that expensive for my business. But what I'm going to buy is an investment in what I do, and it's going to create better quality of, of the type of products and the product services that I do. So it's the right thing for me to do. You understand? Um, grow the business. That's right. So the only way I'm going to grow the business is by investing in it. And I, I want to buy this camera. But when I'm going through the process, I'm scared to death of buying this camera. Like, what if I buy it and nobody wants the service? And, what? and I come up with a million reasons why I shouldn't. Actually, I was just talking to a friend a little while ago, and I was telling them I'm going to buy it in Best Buy because their return policy is better. And I'm just, you know, I'm already talking myself out of it. I'm already thinking failure. And you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy the camera. I'm going to institute the camera into my products and services, and I'm going to make it successful. And if it's not successful, then you know what, whatever it is, the reason why it's not successful is going to teach me something for something in the future. So that said, um, that, that's pretty much what I have to say. So start now. The Internet provides a great opportunity for you to be able to. And, and then uh, my point that I was originally making, I'm sorry, I lost my track of thought. That camera, the cost of doing what that camera does five, ten years ago was hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the internet provides an amazing opportunity for you to broadcast and do things that you could never do before. I would never be able to afford $100,000 in the last 20 years to, to promote my products and to create an environment uh, that, that, would, um, that would be able to have the quality that I would need to have TV broadcast quality, 4K camera, 
a uh, hundred thousand or better, and now I can get it for less than a thousand. So the same thing goes for across the board. If you want to sell T-shirts, if you want to make T-shirts, if you want to uh, make cakes, if you want to do art, this is the best time in the world. But there's so many companies out there to help you start at the smallest scale possible and then scale up. So I just really want you to think about that. So my number one tip is get started today. All right. Um, let me see any comments. Thank you so much, George. I started small and I'm crawling with Latina Moms of Long Island. You're not. You're doing a good job. You're doing a great job. I've been to your events. I've seen how you've grown. This year alone, your Three Kings Day event was twice as attended as, as last year. Um, you know, you don't have to grow overnight. That's the other thing. Um, you know, a side tip is people think that when they're, there, when they're on the Internet, they have to reach tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. No, you need a thousand people who give a shit. You need a thousand people that are willing to invest in your idea. And if you have a thousand people who truly believe in your ideal and your, your vision, then you'll never go broke. You just have to find out what you need to sell them. You need to find out how you're going to monetize what it is that you have to offer. But if you have a thousand people in your corner, you're good. And a lot of you have way more than a thousand people in your corner. But you have to figure out how you're going to tell that story. I'm about to buy a car for delivery, so yes, I hear you. Yeah, awesome. You got to invest. You have to invest. You have to find a way. And if you know what, if for some reason you couldn't find a car, then you need to partner with somebody who has a car and figure out how that's going to work financially. Real talk, working on a passion project, and I appreciate the inspiration. So talk to me about your passion project uh, to the extent that you can on this public forum because I know that sometimes our passion projects have uh, intellectual property that we don't want to share freely. But talk to me about some of the themes about what you're doing and what's holding you back, Harris. I would love to hear that. Number two, the second tip I want to talk about is stop predicting the future. Listen, ninguno de ustedes son Walter Mercado, all right? So real talk, stop predicting the future. Stop making yourself fail before you even try. You know, I see so many people out there saying, oh, well, you know, so-and-so wrote a book and they sent it to a publisher and the publisher rejected them. That's, guess what? Maybe their book sucked and your do yours doesn't. Your story's better than that. Maybe the person that read the book is not resonating with that person. Maybe you're an actor and you went to an audition and you killed the role from your perspective. Everybody that loves you and has seen you do it and practice your lines says you're the best person for the role. But maybe the director and the, st and the casting agency had a different vision of what that might look like. You don't know. You really have no idea. You have to go in and you have to try. Sometimes you could succeed by just showing up. And I've, I've seen that happen so many times. Sometimes, every time that you give up on something or you don't go out for something, you're giving somebody another opportunity to shine because you weren't there to compete. You weren't there to, 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 to show what you got. So in the process of you thinking to yourself, oh, I'm going to fail, yeah, you know what? You did fail because you didn't try. What's my guy? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, people keep predicting, like, oh, you're, if I do that, nobody's going to care about me. I have a friend, sweet, sweet girl. She does uh, YouTube tutorials, and... I love her. Her personality is so freaking amazing on, on her channel. And I've heard her say every now and then, oh, my little channel or my this. And I, I, I talk to her and I say to her, why do you say little? You know, if you have 100 people following you, that's amazing. 100 people really care about your expertise. You're a subject matter expert to those 100 people. They buy into your brand, to your wittiness, your sarcasm, everything about you. They love you. So don't belittle that, you know, love everybody. If you have five people following you, if you have 5,000 people or 50,000 people, love them all. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that you do everything that you can to give them the same performance regardless of who shows up. I talked myself out of running for office 10 years ago because I was scared. I finally decided to do it two years ago. And with God and the dedicated core of supporters, we were successful. That is amazing, Christopher. What office did you run for? Where are you, where are you located? That's an amazing story. And you know what? Maybe you weren't ready 10 years ago. That's the truth of the matter. I mean, maybe sometimes we're right. Sometimes we're not. But we have to try. We have to try because we never know what our potential is until we actually put ourselves into running. You know, we have to actually throw ourselves into the ring and fight it out and just figure out, you know, what can we do right and what can we do wrong and, and just, just kind of go roll with the punches. So stop basing your decisions on other people's successes and failures. You know, um, you're not what the mercado, like I said before. Stop trying to predict what's going to happen to you if you try something. Just do it. Just do it and learn from the experience. You know, um, I heard Tony Robbins say something the other day about a young lady, and her father was was never really there for her. 
Um, he was a drug addict, and he abu- he was abusive to the mom and to the daughter. And uh, and he told he told her something very interesting. He told her to thank him because had he not been who he is, she would never be the person that she is today. And I truly believe that. I have so many sad stories in my life, things that really hurt me at the time, things that I thought would break me, and those things are the things that molded me into the person I am today. So how dare me ever say that I regret anything, you know? Um, your state rep in Bridgeport, Connecticut. That's awesome. I'm actually doing a lot of work in Bridgeport and Waterbury lately. So, Chris, we have to get up. Um, I definitely have to catch up with you. I'm not big into politics, and I probably never endorse you. Um, but I love your story, and I love the fact that you're doing what you're doing. I have no idea what your politics are, but I like the fact that you're Latino, and I like the fact that you're doing something, you know, that you're out there, you're trying. So I appreciate that. Um, I hope that you keep it going, and then you keep breaking barriers regardless of your politics. Jesse Mito started with a Friday dance class in Brooklyn with you, and now I'm training to debut with one of the biggest international dance team, best international t- dance teams. Who would have thought that coming out to show support for diabetes and staying fit would led me to a dream that I never thought I could accomplish? Thank you, Hermano. Wow. Jesse, you know, that means so much coming from you. Um, we've been friends, I would say, I don't know, 16, 18 years online. Um, and... Uh, and, you know, and, and, and friends, you know, in a really weird way, because obviously it's, it's, sometimes it's an illusion of people knowing each other and we really don't get to know each other. And recently I got a chance to hang out with you and find out so much more about you. And actually you, I consider you a friend today, a real friend, not just a Facebook friend. Um, but you have been an incredible supporter. You always promote everything that me, Papo, do with Capi Cool, Sofrito, et cetera. And I'm really glad that you are uh, hanging out with the Salsa Salsa team and the uh, Bachata Touch because I think it's the right place for you, and you're an amazing dancer. So I really love the fact that you, uh, you're you making that happen. So thank you so much for that testimony. I appreciate that. Um, wow, I don't even know what to say after that. Um, I guess we'll get to the next tip. So tip number three. So, so far we have tip number one, get started today. Number two, stop predicting the future. You're not Walter Mercado. That's going to be my tagline for that. Number three, pick goals that are going to let you fail. So many times I see people pick goals that, um, that are fall into a safe zone. They don't want to fail on a big scale. They want to fail just a little bit just so it's not noticeable. Um, you know, in the event that it doesn't work out, they want to make sure that it's, it's a small L so they don't have to uh, explain too much and they don't have to, um, you know, be embarrassed or whatever have you. But I'm going to tell you right now that some of my biggest successes have come after amazingly fucking huge failures. And I'm sorry I'm cursing so much, but it's true. Um, I, I, I've made some really big mistakes. I've really, I, I've blown it a couple of times. And a lot of the things that I've blown, for me personally, have been procrastination. It's been that whole paralyzing fear type of thing where I just kind of hesitated on an opportunity and somebody else snatched it up from under me. Um, you know, th- there's been many mistakes that I've made, but as a result of what I learned from those mistakes... My biggest successes come from that. So, so for me, I'm like, you know what? Shoot for the stars. Like, literally, like, just go for the biggest, go for the biggest, most impossible dream that you have. And look how, and, and, and you're going to see how big your results are going to be because you're shooting for what's supposed to be an impossible goal. So if you make it, it's an amazing story. But if you don't make it, you're that much closer. And maybe the next thing gets you there. Or maybe two things after that gets you there. But you can... Failure is huge. I, I talked about failure a couple of weeks ago, and for me, failure has been my biggest school. My biggest lessons have come from failure. So I really, really hope that you're shooting for the stars, that you're really shooting for goals that seem to be impossible, things that are, like, huge. A couple of years ago, me and my partner, Papo, decided to make something come true, something that we always talked about. Um, we wanted to create a school, a school of poetic arts. We teamed up with Johnny Rose, who helped us get into Boricua College, and we started having these classes. We, we, we brought in Keith Roach, uh, we brought in Rick Villar, and um, when we did this, we was, part, of, part of me was like, who are we to like, start a school? Like, who do we think we are? And, um, and, we, and we did it. You know, we did it for two years. We self-funded it, um, literally, like made no money if anything we spent money making it happen 
And today, um, just after last week, I went to NCLR conference and I started talking to people about what we're doing. And it, it so happens that what we're doing is along the line of the biggest trend happening in U.S. education. It's the STEM, STEAM conversation, the science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And everything that we're doing it just resonates so deeply with what's happening in the world, in diversity, in corporate, in everywhere. Um, and now it seems like we have a real chance of having a building not only in New York, but in other places in the country. Um, so that to me is, is huge, but you know what, we, we, we may have been playing it safe for too long, you know, and, and lately we were threatened with not having a space at all. And that really kind of woke us up and made us say, you know what, we have to be bold and we just have to go out there and ask for it because other, or, other organizations are out there. I know an organization in the Bronx that documents hip hop that's not black or Latino run and they have million dollar budgets. But meanwhile, we're trying to create something for our kids. We're, we're trying to refund defunded arts programs in Brooklyn, in Queens, in, in disenfranchised neighborhoods in the Lower East Side, in the Bronx, et cetera, and we don't have any money? That's unacceptable. So we had to get bold, and, and we started pushing hard. And I went to NCLR, and I had lots of conversations with people who run foundations and people who are grant writers, and, and we had those conversations. And now we have things that are starting to look like it really could happen, you know? But if I didn't make that choice, if, if my team didn't push me to really kind of go out there and look for alternatives to what we currently have, then, then we would never know, you know? Um, so we're going to build that school. I'm telling you here right now, we're going to build that school. It's going to happen. Um, La Sopa is going to happen for sure. Um, I see Denise Ortiz joined. I text, we texted earlier today. She says that she has a business that she wants to start and she wants to chat with me. Um, for those of you who do want to have um, conversations with me about your business ideas, about your entrepreneurial visions, etc., um, I'm located here in Greenpoint slash Williamsburg, Brooklyn, on Nassau Avenue by McCarran Park. Um, so I have office hours every Wednesday um, where I take in people who want to come in and just have a free chat, have some coffee with me, and we could talk a little bit about what your ideas are and find out if we have a product or service that can actually help you get where you need to go. Or if not, I'll refer you to somebody who can help you. And a lot of times those referrals are free referrals uh, to different organizations that actually uh, address the needs that you have. So what's next? We talked about picking goals. So first, get started. Two, stop predicting the future. And three, pick goals that may cause you to fail. Failure is good. And number four is actually, well, actually before, number three, I just want to tag one more other thing. I don't think that for the most of you that really want to accomplish something, if you want a new job, if you want to write a book, if you want to be an actor or actress, if you want to be a comedian, if you want to buy a home, I, whatever it is you want to accomplish that the fear is paralyzing you from, I think that you need to understand that nobody is really rooting against you. Now, granted, I know that some people who are successful have haters and people hate on them or whatever, but for the average person, for what you want to do in your world right now, there's nobody rooting against you. You know, everybody's rooting for you. People are going to... Uh, challenge your ideas at, at times. They may come to you and say, hey, you know what, I don't think what... And they'll give you some feedback or whatever. Just understand where the feedback is coming from and who you're getting it from. You know, um, I remember... I, my family loves me. My grandmother loves me to death. But when I wasn't taking my education seriously and she didn't think that I was going to really live to my potential, let's say that, when she didn't think I was going to live to my potential, she told me to go apply for a city job. And it's not that she didn't love me and she didn't think I was smart. I think that in her mind, she just wanted me to be financially stable. And she thought if picking up garbage or being a police officer or an or EMT or a fireman was going to allow me to have financial stability, then that's what I should do. So sometimes your family looks at your circumstance from a different lens and they may advise you against doing something that's risky. Um, you know... I would take it with a grain of salt personally because at the end of the day, they don't have to pay your bills. They don't have the responsibilities that you have. And unless they're taking care of you personally, um, they're probably not going to bail you out if it goes wrong. So I would say go for it. That's just me. Um, I'm open to taking your questions. Number four is what I said in the beginning, actually. Number four is you can't really fail unless you don't try. That's the only thing in the world... The only thing in the world that can cause you to fail is not really trying. 
is not doing what it takes to find out if you're able to, if you're worthy, if you're if you're good enough, if you're could be successful. You know, um, there's a lot of things in between this. Obviously, when you have a business idea, you have to find the right part. There's so many different elements, but I'm just talking about you and your personal vision and your dream. If you decide that you want to do something, then do your best to make sure you partner with the right people to make it happen. And not trying is the only way you can truly fail. Marisol Cereira says, this is an empowering conversation to have. Thank you for having it. You're in my brain right now. <laughs> Amaris Moss, how are you? Amaris is actually an old college friend who was probably one of the first readers ever of Sofrito for Your Soul. She's a big fan of poetry. Um, my website actually started off as my personal poetry website. Um, she was a, a good friend. Uh, I don't know. She, she's just really dope. Um, and uh, she's supported all these years. She's still in my life. I really appreciate her. She's in Southern Florida not right now, chilling, making her dreams come true. Um, but yeah, Evelyn Alvarez is on here. Evelyn Alvarez, this is a conversation that you and I have had many times before. Am I right? Tu lo sabe. Definitely. Evelyn Alvarez does amazing work. She helps uh, teenagers get the right clothing for their formal events. So um, it's called Prom King. And uh, basically, she, you know, she works in partners with community organizations to make sure kids have the resources to enjoy those life milestones in the best way they can. Hearing you speak is very motivating. Sigue para adelante. Denise, love you. Love you. Me, Denise is another one. Mi gente days. Oh, my God. So many people here from back in the days. There's people on here that I've known over 15 years. So I, I'm very fortunate to have you here. I was reflecting on our conversation that took place today, and I thought if I suddenly had all the money in the venue for my dream, Spot, what would I do? Like that moment, after that thought, hold on. I realized how important this waiting period is, in fact, valuable and so needed. I need to plan and be ready. So, George, you're right. I may not be able to start the manifestation of my dream now, but the foundation starts in my planning. Gracias for our chat. No problem, Jen. Jen, you know, you already know. I, I see your vision. I know what you want to do, and I know you can't do it now because of your life uh, um, responsibilities. But it doesn't mean that you can't start building the brand. It doesn't mean that you can't document the conversation of how it, what, what it takes to get there. It doesn't mean that you can't start designing what your store is going to look like or your, what your business is going to look like and what your collateral is going to look like. I mean, there's so many things that you could do in these two or three years that you have to wait. Um, and you could build an audience on social media. You could build an audience so that when you get ready to open up your business, you'll have a line of people waiting for you to open it up that will actually be invested in your story uh, more than anything. Marisol said that I actually connected with you and Papa first time we hint and I've been following you both since. We will meet one day soon. Marisol, where are you from? Um, that's awesome. Yeah, Mijente was such a great space for us to, um, to blossom in a lot of different ways. Um, as you already know, Papa was like the first social media celebrity of the world, uh, having welcomed every single member of Mijente and from day one. Um, and then when we both moved over to MySpace, we both hit mass appeal. Actually, I have more followers on our MySpace pages than we ever had on, F on Facebook. Um, we had something sick, like a quarter of a million people following us back on MySpace. Um, but, you know, uh, that's, there was a different monster, and there were people from all over the world that really weren't invested in Copy Cool per se. But, um, but still, it was a great experience, and uh, we connected with so many people over the years, so many icons, so many people who are doing amazing work, um, people who are legendary, um, and we have relationships with them to this day. So. Definitely, the, everybody who comes from the Mijente School, uh, from the MySpace School, we love you guys. I live in New Jersey, in Jersey City, but spend most of my time in New York for salsa and radio projects. Oh, I love radio. You know that, right? <laughs> if you know anything about me, you know I love radio. I actually recently just produced uh, some pilots for um, Univision on their uh, Wallow channel. Um, that was a great experience. I was actually late, late last year. Um, that was pretty cool. Uh, and I'm currently working on a really big a radio project with the Lewis Network, the Luis Network, Luis Jimenez. So I'm pretty excited about that. Actually, as soon as I get off uh, this chat, I will be working on that work tonight. So, um, yeah, definitely. So check anybody who knows Luis Jimenez, LuisNetwork.com is definitely a place that you need to check out. Um, he has completely taken his brand off radio, off satellite, and he is managing everything through the Internet, and it's pretty dope. So if you want to see some really good content, go to LuisNetwork.com and join today. He's not sponsoring, but, but you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> 
any questions um so those are the four tips so i just want to go over them really quick and i take any questions that you have if you have specific questions about your business or something that's holding you back i'll be more than happy to answer i have time um so just make use of it so number one was get started number two was stop predicting the future you're not worth the mercado number three pick goals that are going to help you or cause you to fail because you learn through failure and number four, the only way to truly fail is not doing anything at all. Those are the four tips that I have for you. Um, they're applicable no matter what you're trying to do. Um, we're talking about just fear. We're not talking about business per se, but I'm using it in the concept, in the, in the concept of business because really, honestly, a lot of you are, are coming to my classes because you want to change in career, because you want to build a brand, because you, you have stories that you want to tell. And, and that's what I do. I help people tell stories. I help you uh, build that, that online persona um, that's just really a true reflection of who you are and that what people don't get to see when you're at your corporate job uh, what people don't get to see when you're when you're at school etc so number two is awesome <laughs> stop predicting the future you're not walking like God. I'm so gonna make a meme about that um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah so um, hopefully uh, so I want to say this first of all the people who actually showed up here today thank you so much I really do appreciate you I'm going to be doing more of these on different topics. Some of them are going to be entrepreneurial. Some of them are just going to be life lessons. Because um, I think that uh, in my role as a social media strategist, I end up touching on both points. I, I think I touch on the entrepreneurial, but I also, I, I guess my style and my empathetic uh, views allow me to really kind of dig into some of the roadblocks that you have in life. And, and actually, some of the advice that I give people regularly actually helps them in other areas of their life. So it's a very holistic approach to social media. Unlike a lot of my uh, peers, I'd like to talk about uh, storytelling from a different place and a place of vulnerability, a place of being 100% authentic, and, uh, and, and relationship building is a big piece of it. So, um, so I have a very different approach to social media than other people that I know and people that teach, etc. Um, I'm planning to do a Snapchat session next Tuesday in the daytime, and I think... Mm, you know what? Stay tuned. I'm definitely going to do a Snapchat session where we actually do a tutorial on how to tell stories through Snapchat. We're going to teach you a bunch of tips and tricks. It's going to be very low cost. It's going to be like $25 for a three-hour session uh, per person. Um, we're looking at about 10 people in a group, and I'll have coffee and tea for everybody. It's going to be here at my office in the evening. So hopefully if you're looking to promote your brand through either Instagram's new Snap feature or Snapchat itself, um, this class is definitely for you. This is fabulous. I love that you stay sharing this great info. Again, it's so wonderful to see your growth. Thank you, Amadis. I really appreciate that. Um, so I have really run out of things to say for the most part, but if you have any questions, I would love to answer your questions at this time. And see, no, you know, you could always email me, engage at sofritomediagroup.com. Um, what else? What else? What else? Okay, well, I'm waiting for your questions to pour in, which I doubt they will, but if they do... Um, we also have a new website that we launched called Latino Movie Night, and we're going to be promoting a lot of projects that are Latino of uh, Latino interest, produced, written, and, and act, you know, acting by Latinos. Um, Latino Movie Night is currently just uh, doing a newsletter, so you can sign up at latinomovienight.com, and we will throw you into the first newsletter that's out on September 15th. And then by January 1st, we're looking to have a full-fledged website with lots of information on film festivals and independent projects across the country. Um, this website will be completely free, both to advertise and to view. Um, this is just a community project to make sure that we see diversity in the media. Um, I'm teaming up with some really heavy hitters to make sure that this website uh, has the power uh, behind it so that you could actually see the beauty of uh, this independent uh, content creator network that we have. Um, so, yeah. With that said, anything else? Going once. I know that there's a delay on the text, so I'm going to kind of hold on for a couple of minutes um, and make sure. My video was lagging. I'm not sure if you answered this, but I'll ask again. What advice do you have for people who know something big lies before them and don't know where to focus their energy? That maybe they, they don't know yet where their skills or passion lie. Mm, you know what? Can you give me an example of something specific? I would say, I would say explore your creativity. Find out what you're somewhat passionate about. So for me, you know, I, at the very root of everything, I wanted to share my poetry. My poetry was very personal to me. I wanted to share my poetry. I wanted to write. I wanted to be recognized as a writer. 
So I created this on FritoFrioSoul.com. That website has evolved in such a big, just such a bigger thing than what it originally was that now we're sharing experiences. Um, I'm doing a lot of live blogging. I'm going to events and I'm sharing them via live stream. Uh, I'm experiencing, for example, I love to drive cars. I get to drive cars from all different car makers. I get to go speak at conferences. I get to share my story over and over again. So what I really wanted to do was just share a piece of my culture. And what I have become as a result of that is an ambassador of culture on a global stage. So, you know, you have to go to the root of what it is that you're trying to accomplish. What is it? Um, the other day I spoke about, um, I spoke about uh, a doctor. A doctor was trying to promote his, uh, his medical practice. And he kept talking about his beautiful building that he invested money in and, and uh, the, the equipment that he bought and, and whatever. And people on Facebook really didn't give a shit. They didn't care that he spent a million dollars on an x-ray machine. Like, that, no, that, that means nothing to them. So my advice to him was, you know what, shift your brand. People come to you as a doctor because they want to live a healthier life. Give them tips on how they can live healthier. Talk to them about what it takes to be proactive in your health. Talk to them about prevention. Talk to them about trends in medicine. Talk to them about exercise and the importance of eating right. That's what people care about. And if you do that, if you do that and nothing but that, everybody will recognize that you're a doctor and if they're in your area, they will look you up to see if you're the right medical provider for them. They'll fall in love with your personality and your authenticity as a result. But nobody cares about your million dollar x-ray machine. Nobody cares about how pretty your receptionist is. Nobody cares about how clean your office is unless they're there. Like bragging about how beautiful and clean and nice your office is means nothing. That's something that, that's a point of entry. People come in, they're going to see that. But you have to get them through the door. And you're not going to get them through the door bragging about that, you know? So, basically, like, I want to do everything. <laughs> I'm not sure how to trim down and focus. You know what, Jessica, let's have a conversation offline because I have a feeling that, that whatever it is that you're interested in has a, um, an intellectual property component to it that, that you may not want to share here in this forum on a Facebook Live. Um, so if we can have that conversation offline, maybe I could kind of help you focus a little bit more on what it is you're trying to do. But yeah, I would make a list of what things that you're passionate about. And um, I guess, what do you read? You know, who are you following? Who are the people that you uh, are inspired by? You know, is it an Oprah? Is it, you know, is it an Eva Longoria? Is, I mean, I don't know. You know, just talk to me about uh, who it is that you're looking at and what inspires you about them. And then we can kind of shape it from there. You're so damn smart, the social media goat. <laughs> no, there's people smarter than me on social media. I just have a different approach. I have, I have, you know, there's people who talk about numbers all day. There's people who talk about selling, and, and they, they're able to give you all kinds of tips and techniques on how to sell. Um, I have a salesperson background, um, but for me, it's all about relationship building. You know, I, I'm more of the school of Ted Rubin than, you know, anything, or Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, I'm all about relationship building. I'm all about being out there and helping people and adding value to their lives. And then if I have something that I, I could ask of you, I will ask of you. And I'm not really good at asking, uh, to be honest with you, but I always want to provide value so that you will support me. You know, I always want to provide value into your lives. I want to make sure that your lives are better. I want to make the space bigger and better. So that's why when I walk into a conference like Hispanicize, I'm so proud because I was one of the first bloggers. Like I started one of the first Latino websites in the world and now we go to a conference where there's two, 3,000 websites just present in that room, not to mention the tens of thousands of other sites that are out there. Um, you know, to me, that's, that's huge. So I always want to add value. I always want to help bloggers and content creators um, show their authenticity through their content. I want to help them be more efficient. I want them to make sure that they're not um, business owners, making sure that they do, are doing social media, that they're doing it the right way, but they're not actually neglecting other parts of their business. So having run businesses and successful businesses, million-dollar businesses for other companies for years, um, I, I think I have, a really good, um, I have a really good focus on what it takes to do a little bit of both. So um, what's your, uh, Yvette Regalado says, what's your advice for someone who wants to leave a stable career to venture out on her own in a completely different direction? How do you let those who gave you a chance know that you're looking f I'm sorry, hold on. I'm trying to get the, that you're looking to move on. You know, um, wow, um, that's a loaded one. Um, so I told my story a little bit earlier on in the video. I was working for T-Mobile. I had a successful career with T-Mobile for 10 years in management. Um, I was doing great. I loved the job. 
if the job was everything that I had to do for the rest of my life, I would have loved the job. I loved mobile technology. I loved that T-Mobile was an underdog that became a major competitor, um, that we were hungry, that our staff every day went out on the front lines and did our best. Even when our service wasn't the best, we were out there making sure that the customers felt valued and that we always give them a place to connect um, to, to the people that mattered to them the most. So that was huge for me. That, that experience was the, the, I, that's the, that's the experience. T-Mobile was the experience that made me really think about what I wanted to do after T-Mobile. Um, so I would say take the best of what you have and make sure that those learnings, those themes that you learned in that particular career translate to what you're going to do next. What I would say is start at the smallest denominator. So I'm not really sure what you're trying to do. I'm not sure what you do currently. So if you can give me more information, I can kind of draw some parallels. Um, but when it comes time for you to make the decision, you know, be honest and real. You know, obviously not to the point where you're going to lose your job if you reveal too soon. But I would say, you know, find out who your mentors are. Find out who the people of confianza that you have in your life and talk to them about what you want to do next, what your aspirations are. And you don't have to frame it as a separate career. You could even frame it as a career within the company that you're in right now. Just say, hey, listen, I really want to acquire X, Y, Z skill set because I would like to do more with my life. I like to do something different. Uh, for me, when I was at T-Mobile, I wanted to be in the marketing space. I really wanted to work in the marketing space. I did a couple of different marketing uh, task force, which ended up being the beginning of the platform that the social media that T-Mobile does today is built on. Um, but I really wanted to do that. The problem was that T-Mobile didn't allow employees to work on that portion of it. They, they actually outsourced it to, a, to an agency, to multiple agencies, actually. Um, so in order for me to get that type of position, I would have to leave to the agency. But I wanted to get as close as possible that I could to the marketing department. And I did that by being part of a bunch of task force. And I really wanted to see the ins, in, the ins and outs of agency work and how they came up with the ideation and the different ideas that they had to make commercials and the different campaigns and stuff. I wanted to find out how T-Mobile processed that. And I needed to learn that for two reasons. One, because I wanted to create strategies that Latino businesses could reach a better U.S. Hispanic audience respectfully. That was the first piece of it. And the second piece was I wanted to find out what goes into team building in that environment. Like, well, how do we do, how do we get sit down in a think tank and actually make ideas happen? How do we make things happen from a thought to an actual execution? So I don't know if that makes sense to you, but... Uh, for me, that was a big thing. So when I was at T-Mobile, I was very honest with my boss at the time. And it, it could have hurt me. Um, but I, I, it may have held me back from other opportunities. But I was really, really honest with her about what I wanted to do with the company and what I thought my, my, my true talents were. And I did everything I could to get as close to that as possible. And unfortunately, I couldn't do it with T-Mobile on the outside, on the inside rather. But I have been able to do that with T-Mobile and other companies on the outside. So I hope that that answers your question. Um, but again... Uh, we could totally have this conversation offline if there's some intellectual property things that you don't want to really uh, divulge here. I definitely understand that, um, that, you know, people's ideas are important to them. I have an opinion on that, I'll be honest with you. I think ideas are nothing without execution. So um, I don't think anything is new under the sun. I think we're just remixing and finding the way it works for us. So that's me. Teresita, La Tere Ayala just arrived back from Africa. God bless you, Mama. Thank God that you're home safe. I know that um, you're not coming home to the most uh, highly energetic city at this time. There's a lot of things going on over there, but I hope that you bring some of that happiness to the people that you love uh, to Chicago um, because you've uh, experienced quite a few beautiful things when you were in Africa. So thanks for this. But let's chat. Okay, so ideas are nothing without execution. That's right. Christina Morillo. Oh, my God. Christina, I got to talk to you so badly that Grant came in. And I do have uh, two sessions that I need to do with you at the Bronx Community College and at LaGuardia. So we have to chat about that this week, but I'm not going to be free until Tuesday. So hopefully we can talk on Tuesday about it. Um, but call me, all right, for sure. Um, so if you want to get in touch with me, if you do want to have a session with me to talk about um, some of your entrepreneurial uh, dreams, aspirations, etc., cetera, um, the best thing to do is email me at engage at Sofrito Media Group. That's engage at sofritomediagroup.com or you can call me at 516-690-7397 that's 516-690-7397 um, I'm not going to pick up calls today but uh, you can call me, leave me a voicemail 
and we could schedule something this week. I think I have some time in the city on Tuesday available, and I think I have some time on Wednesday available this week. Um, after that, um, it'll be it's next week. Also, I want to let um, people in Alexandria, Virginia know that I'm going to be out there on the 17th, 18th, and 19th. I'll be taking meetings and doing sessions in the Washington, D.C. area. And then the only other thing I have scheduled right now, I have a trip to Cuba scheduled, but I don't have the exact dates yet. And then I also have... Um, I have uh, September 17th, I will be at Penn State University uh, delivering a keynote address for Latino Heritage Month. So that's what I have going on on the calendar right now. Um, if you're interested in booking me, again, engage at sofritomediagroup.com is the email. Um, more than happy to, to talk to any of you. Jennifer Rodriguez is in the building, my buddy. What's going on, Jennifer? I still have time, folks, so this, I can answer more questions. I just want to make sure that this, the, you know, the, the time that you put into this session is actually valuable to you. I'm going to take a walk around the office because I'm tired of sitting down. I've been sitting all day. So I just want to make sure that I can answer all your questions, um, any kind of curiosities you have uh, in the limitations of this room. Of course, again, I do understand that some of you have intellectual property things that you need to hold on to. Um, but uh, if you can share the themes of your questions, I could more than you know, I'll be more than happy to answer them in the best way that I possibly can. Um, but I, I really appreciate this chat. You guys have been very active. How do you stay motivated to keep pushing forward? Oh. That's a really good question. Um, there's a lot of things that motivate me to keep pushing forward. One, I can't fail because I have nothing to fall back on. That's the, that's the honest truth. The, the honest truth is that I am my old boss. You know, um, if I don't work, I don't eat. It's that simple. And the other piece of it is, too, that I have a lot of people who look up to me. There's a lot of people who I'm helping build businesses right now. There's people who I'm actually consulting with. And if I fail in my own brand, then I'm not qualified to help you with yours. So that, to me, is everything. My, 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 um, my accountability to myself and my failures is the biggest with me. Like, I, I can't, I have to practice what I preach every day. I can't go out there and tell you to do something and do something different. So my reputation is everything to me. So I'm motivated by my reputation. I'm motivated by my results. I'm motivated by my ability to do for myself what I'm telling you that you could do for yourself if you sit in a room and you talk to me. I hope that answers your question. That's really what it is at the end of the day, you know. If you're a doctor, if you're a doctor and you're outside smoking, but you're telling your patients not to smoke, then you're not doing your job. Your brand is off. You're off brand. And at the end of the day, I don't want to be off brand. I want to make sure that you see my success as Sofrito Media Group, the things that I'm doing for my company. I need to make sure that you see that and that inspires you to do what you could do, to see that I made up my job. Like, my job is not really a job. Like there's, there's no, like, I couldn't go to a company and do exactly what I do for my company because it doesn't exist. I created this. I created what I have. And as, since I created it, I'm accountable to make sure it's sustainable, you know? Um, you know, this is, so I can't fail. I can't fail. I have to constantly reinvent myself. I have to constantly see what works and what doesn't work and make it work better, you know? I have to know when to partner and when to get people to help, you know. I can't just decide that, you know what, um, I have to do this all myself and that's it and burn myself out. I have, to, I have to go out there and I have to be the best me possible because a lot of people are relying on me. People see me winning and they want to win. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the messages like the ones Jesse and Amaris just gave me earlier in this chat. And there's so many more people out there that rely on me for that. So I want to make sure I make you proud and in the process that I can take care of my family and my responsibilities and I could build something better. I, 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 I'm very honest about what I want to do. I want to build things that outlive me. So sofritoforyoursoul.com will be here for many years to come. La sopa, capicu, all that. These are things that I want to outlive me. So absolutely. Dorothy says, so appreciative of your candor and time. No, I, I look, look. This is it right here. <laughs> this is what, what happens. I want you to know that I'm forever your partner. 
whoever you are out there, if you come to me with good intentions, with good heart, we're going to make it happen. Sometimes some of you can't, you know, you come to me and you tell me, hey, George, you know, I can't afford that session. We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work somehow. So that said, I, I really want to thank you guys for joining today. So many of you out there with great messages. I really appreciate all your comments and your feedback. Um, I'm here. All right. Engage at sofritomediagroup.com. 516-690-7397. Feel free to text. Thank you so much, and you're doing such an awesome job. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer is my buddy. She's one of the, she's part of an elite group that's part of the Capicu and the Sofrito family and Hispanicized family. So she's kind of like, she's like a trifecta of awesomeness. She gets to see me in all of my environments. So that's the other thing. Some of you know me in one way, but you never see me in my other environments. So it's kind of weird when you see me on video talking about this stuff because you don't really see me. You know, how many of you have actually watched me deliver a keynote? But how many of you have watched me do poetry? How many have you seen me working in the community? So there's so many different facets to what I do, and I don't promote them all. There's times that I don't talk about a lot of things that we do just because I think it's too much noise. But Jennifer is actually one of the people in the world that's actually seen me in all those environments. So I appreciate her immensely. Yvette Regalado, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that's it, mi gente. What I would appreciate you doing is if you could all give me a share on this. I really do appreciate it. If you could share this with people that you know that need to hear this message. I know you know people that need to hear this message. Your cousins, tu primo de tu primo, la prima de tu prima, you know who it is. Also, if you want to be connected to some of my other free workshops, this is something I'm doing on my personal page right now. I invited everybody to my personal page, but I do a lot more work on my business page. So join sofritomediagroup.inc, sofritomediagroup.inc. That is the page where all my business offerings, all my upcoming classes are announced, my keynotes. I'm putting a lot more focus on that page because that's the page for the people like you who are interested in learning more about what I do on the business side, not just from the ideological and the community service side. Those of you who really want to build businesses, who want tips and tricks on how to use social media, that's where you need to be. So Frito Media Group Inc. is the page you want to be at. So please join me there. And with that said, mi gente, que Dios lo bendiga. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I'll see you soon, okay? Peace.